What are the connections between Jacobitism and Freemasonry? Ooh. There are documented examples of Jacobite Freemasons especially living in exile in France. But most troublesome is the claim that even Bonnie Prince Charlie was a Mason, or that he collaborated with French and Swedish Masons to regain the throne. As someone who is fond of the Jacobite mythos and claims, this revelation disturbs me. Well, don't let it disturb you too much. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that masonry as we know it and as it's developed is rather different, at least uh, rather different than how it was perceived in the uh, pre-revolutionary 18th century. Uh, the fact is that there were spies and counter-spies dealing with the Jacobites uh, by the British government in France and Italy and Spain, wherever they were. And one of the ways to evade being spied upon was using the system of uh, secret lodges. Uh, initially, the Scottish Rite, as it's called, of Freemasonry, was primarily Catholic. That came to an end after the French Revolution, but that's the way it was. Uh, the Swedish branch of Masonry is fascinating all in itself uh, because it, um, uh, unlike most of the rest of Freemasonry, it pays at least lip service to um, Christianity. And that's because King Gustavus III of Sweden, who was assassinated in 1788, did not like the way Masonry was going in the last years of the 18th century. So he literally took over all the lodges in Sweden, rewrote the rituals to Christianize them, and just ran the show as his own, which is what makes the Swedish Rite different. Um, it is, I've been told, although some have disputed it, so I don't know, I'll leave it to others who are more into it than I am, uh, that alone of all the rites, if a member of the Swedish Rite a Catholic, he doesn't have to leave the order, which is not true of all the rest of the Masonic orders. Okay, wait. That if so, you, it, it, so in all the other orders, if you become a Catholic, you have to leave. Is that what you said? If you are a Catholic, if you become a Catholic, rather, and you are a Freemason who converts, you've got to leave the Masonic order. Okay. Um, Unless you're Swedish, right? Okay. But, a couple alarm bells went off in my head when, for some of the things that you were saying. Uh, so you said the Scottish rite of Freemasonry was primarily Catholic back then? In the beginning, when it so, first started. So yeah. w was, Fre was Freemasonry always so Luciferian and, and deist and this weird sort of thing? Uh, Yes, no, no, and yes. I mean, you always had those elements in it. When did the church officially condemn Freemasonry? Well, there's the thing. Clement XIV first uh, condemned Freemasonry in the 18th century. But that condemnation, for various reasons, was not universal. Um, it was really only... Well, I mean, uh, Joseph de Maistre, for instance, the great Catholic counter-revolutionary writer, he was himself a Freemason... Uh, before the French Revolution. But it was the revolution and what he saw and what he saw in Freemasonry that caused him to leave. Okay. And so the papal cautions before the French Revolution uh, became, because of the role the lodges had played in, that, in the revolution, it became uh, general, shall we say. Um, so you got to bear in mind, part of the problem with Masonry in those days is that as a secret organization, you only knew what you were told. You see, if you were part of a political conspiracy, as the Jacobites had to be, okay. as the French revolutionaries had to be, as the um, American uh, revolutionaries had to be, Freemasonry played a huge part in our revolution. Well, the lodge, with its secrecy, the local lodge, was perfect. Now, what's interesting is that today, they're supposed to be forbidden to discuss religion or politics. Now, how true that is today, I don't know. 
promoter. And if I were, I'd be sworn to secrecy and couldn't tell you anything anyway. Which is what makes, I mean, the problem with masonry is that everyone looks at the whole Luciferian thing and all that. And they skip over the real problem. I say real problem in the sense of what most of us encounter. And that's it's indifferentism. The idea that one religion is as good as another. Right. Or in the immortal words of President Eisenhower, uh, I think it's absolutely essential that everyone have a church, and I don't care what it is. Well, well, isn't that sort of a daughter offshoot of the Luciferian element? I mean, that's... Well, again, it is, but the rest of it, the rest of its doctrines are secret. They could be anything at all. This is what's public and open and what almost all of us have swallowed. Okay. This, I mean, let's put this another way. Let's say that on the one hand, I secretly plotted the overthrow of the government of the city of Monrovia. <laughs> okay. But publicly, I attacked the florist near my house as a purveyor of poison flowers. I got everyone to see that. Now, which of those two things would be the easiest to see and, in a sense, the most dangerous? The easiest to see is the florist. Of course. And the most dangerous because whatever kind of skilled legacy I might be pulling behind the scenes, the florist is going to have nation ruined and lose his business right there in front of everybody. And what I'm saying is, in terms of, their, of its results, the worst part about Freemasonry that we can know is its public teaching, indifferentism. Yeah. Because that's what we've all, I mean, I don't know how to tell you this, but I suspect that in the 300 odd years Freemasonry has been going, the number of freewheeling, open self extensionists has probably not increased that much. But the number of indifferentists has soared to the point to where the dear Holy Father himself could sign, although he didn't mean what he said or didn't mean or didn't say what he meant or something. But he could sign a, uh, a document affirming that God will religions. That would be a far, that is a far greater triumph for Masonic ideals than all of the ritual in the Washington could ever be wow i i didn't make that connection actually to freemasonry with uh that happening but that freemasonry is freemasonry's biggest revealed truth quote unquote is conduct over creed doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're a nice person Yeah. And we all believe that now. Basically, almost all of us are ideological, cultural Freemasons. Yeah, well, you just have to use your conscience, right? And then uh, that's fine. yeah, let your conscience be your guide, and you might as well be in the lodge yourself. <laughs> yeah. In in God we trust. All of us can. <laughs> I mean, uh, this is, this is, you know, people are constantly pursuing Masonic plots where while they are accepting uh, from their culture, from what's around them, being the basic uh, revealed of Freemasonry. I mean, this is what our Lord referred to. As straining at gnats and swallowing camels. Oh, that's true. I I don't know I don't know how to put this, but if most of us, the vast majority of us, have basically Masonic views, why are we why do we babble about the order itself? I mean, the as new an world order, the new world order. I mean, you're not worried no, about that, really. Not in the slightest. Why? 
because it could all go tumbling down our, our heads with uh, airborne Ebola. Yeah. There's all sorts of things God could do to uh, shake our, our global uh, civilization to its foundations. I mean, look, on the one hand, you and I are on the information superhighway as we speak. We are doing something that 10 years ago would have been impossible. But it is so fragile. The web of power that surrounds our globe is very wide, but very shallow. Hmm. Give us a few good uh, plagues or a, a really good economic collapse. Maybe even a maybe even a uh, a, a nearby run from a, a comet to mess up the web, and poof, we go. That reminds me of when we talk about uh, literature, uh, you know, post all all the post apocalyptic stuff. You sort of cite that as this sort of general consensus that everyone sort of feels that it's all fragile and that it's almost that it can't last. Yeah, it's interesting. I think there's definitely that feeling in the air. I mean, and how I also have to hurry to add that I don't know how how accurate that general feeling is. Right. I mean, in the 50s, the, the kinds of horror films they had and science fiction films reflected uh, the national paranoia and fear. But what they were afraid of never came to pass. So, uh, I mean, others, perhaps worse things came to pass, but not what they were afraid of. Yeah. So similarly, it may well be that the, the strange breakdown of our great global civilization that's haunting everyone's fears could be that won't come to pass.